What up? Is it's Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the new album from Barely Alive, released on Disciple Records, Odyssey. Barely Alive are a Massachusetts-based dubstep duo who have been producing from around 2013, signing to Dodge and Fusky's Disciple label in 2014, and for the most part going from strength to strength from there, releasing six EPs and a smattering of huge singles to establish themselves as one of the heavyweight artists of the dubstep scene. From Dead Link to Spitball, Rifle Blow Kiss to Cyberbully, Zombie Hunter, We The Best, there are so many. We the best! Collaborating with the likes of Getta, Virtual Riot, Twine and Astronaut to further cement their position amongst the best the genre has to offer. Not forgetting, of course, their debut album We Are Barely Alive, released to critical acclaim in 2015 with belters such as Elephant, Binary and Hackers. And now, three years later, they are back with their sophomore full-length LP, much to the delight of dubstep fans the world over, Odyssey. In those three years since the first album, the duo going through a bit of a dip in terms of the quality of their ideas, with several originals and remixes, including their Domain EP, falling short somewhat in light of their previous work. Going down different genre avenues altogether, and their dubstep bereft of the flashiness and pinpoint accuracy that we had come to know and love them for. Many speculating as to whether this was because of Barely Alive's members, Willie and Matt, splitting, a rumour that was quickly quelled. But ultimately, many if not all came into this new LP, wondering just what side of Barely Alive we were gonna get. More dubstep, or more genre experimentation, and to what quality? And I think it's fair to say that Odyssey represents a pretty full and weighty mix of the two approaches, even going well beyond that in the process. An interesting mix of tunes, totaling 14 here, that really highlight the duo's willingness to venture far outside the dubstep they're renowned for, whilst retaining a lot of their staple sounds. The introduction to the album is the first instance we get of this, in the title track Odyssey. This fantastic emotion fueled 80s synth wave sequence that captures Barely Alive at their spacey, cinematic best. Honestly, one of the best intros I've heard to a dark electronic music album in a long time. A definite journey into sound in owing to the main vocal sample here, taking us through different generations of music in preparing us for the fresh hits of hard hitting dubstep that come our way in this opener. But for now, let's stick with the experimental stuff, the next example of which comes in the third track, Deeper in Love. Having been told at the end of Know About Me that we have arrived in 1983, we are greeted with this extremely juicy, funk, disco number that is exactly what you would hope it to be, and more. It's barely a live sounds in a disco funk format and style, groovy but tender, uplifting but somber. It brings a lot together in this really well executed mix of moods. <laughs> The vocal from Great Good Fine OK complementing the instrumental's journey so sweetly too, reminiscent of something you may hear from Chromio or Oliver or Tuxedo. The other noticeably funky track is Buddy with vocals from Yves Paquet, another groovy, bouncy, disco inspired tune. Not quite on a level with Deeper in Love, less overt in what it offers, but pleasant all the same and nice to hear within the context of the album. You also have the hip hop inspired new coupe ride out with I Am Sue, which arrives at a brilliant point in the project to tone it down in preparation for the final six tracks. The vocal works really well atop the swinging beat, love the changes it goes through, and it's refreshing to hear for them. Once again, Barely Alive showing us just how much they have to their production arsenal at this point. Finally, on the experimentation front, we have the final track over, featuring Narmeen, 
the second longest on the album, coming in at 4 minutes 14 seconds. Initially seeming like a part 2 to the culminating song in their last album, No Time, before it explodes into this properly futuristic cut, very bright and full of colour. Before melting effortlessly back into the No Time-esque beat to draw the project to a close, an astute point of reflection for everything that's come before it. But that's not to say that there isn't experimentation on the heavier side of this album too. The penultimate track, Warrior, is barely alive keeping us on our feet once again, unsure of what direction it's going to go off in at the start, Madhead City's animated vocal atop a pulsating instrumental. The heaviest parts here being pure drum and bass magic, verging on jump up in its staggered, grisly delivery, dipping into dubstep in its progressions. Really like the sounds on show here, the pace changes, tempo, vocal, it all comes together really well, reminds me of Skrillex's Ragabomb in all the right ways. Then you have Devil's Tower, a grand cinematic cut that is another journey in itself within this album. This high energy, house like monster is barely alive filling space in true barely alive fashion, again taking several unexpected turns, really keeping us on our feet. From the grand jungle themed opening horn section to the fast pace first drop, the breakdown for the second, it's not too dissimilar to Space Lace's Kaiju in that sense. And it's because of all of this that I think that in comparison to the We Are Barely Alive LP, it listens much more like an album than just a collection of bangers. All the little skits and vocals running through Odyssey 2, the moments tail ending several tracks here, just give it more personality and character than what you'd expect. The quality of their sound design still being remarkably evident too, something which I'd say they've never lost in spite of their ideas not being quite as good in the last couple of years. We love them by this point because we know their sound and how clear it is, even though there is so much going on. In that sense it's most evident in the more complex compositions, where more is going on, the heavier stuff, which of course they deliver here in abundance. The first taste of it comes in the opener and title track Odyssey, following that really patient introduction and build, full throttle remorseless dubstep that progresses really well, through all the changes in percussion. A warning sign for what's to come as Barely Alive go back to their roots with this introductory tune, getting as close as possible to the Barely Alive of 2014 and 15 that we all fell in love with. Following that we have the enthralling number Know About Me, which expertly brings together the punchy, matter-of-fact vocals from Virus Syndicate with the screechy, larger-than-life dubstep from Barely Alive. The sound here is just so vibrant and vivacious with so many cheeky touches, could have done with more Virus Syndicate towards the end, but coupled with the opener, this is a very impactful start to the album. That leaves us with six tracks, and although I've been pretty praiseful of it up until now, that's not to say that this album is without its drawbacks. A different side of this album's experimental aspect being open for criticism, because even though this thing is unique sonically, structurally several tracks here are lacking because they're just too short. The tune Xenomorph and Bounce With Me bring staple barely alive synths and moments to the table, but come in at way under 3 minutes. There are others under 3 minutes here, but they have things going for them beyond the intro, drop and repeat formula, such as genre variation, vocals, structure exploration. War of the Worlds, for example, picks up the pace again very well following New Coop ride out. An intergalactic short that sets a really nostalgic scene, working as a bridge towards the album's final third. But in the other two just mentioned, where the dubstep is the main focus, the shortcomings are highlighted more, especially with one coming right after the other. Tracks that seem more like interludes than well-rounded, finished and complete cuts, there are really good parts to them, but I find myself sitting there wishing they'd fleshed them out a lot more. 
Track number 11, Wampum, is a slight rhythm attempt from Barely Alive, getting straight to the point in a swampy, muddy, contorted number that is potentially my least favourite of the 14. A meaty assortment of sounds that is a little hard to enjoy because of how twisted it is. Uh, having said that, it's another example of them branching out and trying new things, both sonically and structurally. Shutdown is one of the more outstanding dubstep tunes here, a growl-ridden, laser-laced banger with a real momentum to it, spaced out effectively, leaves its mark on you. Whilst Bad Thang we know of already, having been released a couple of months ago in collaboration with probably their favourite vocalist ever in Split Breed. Something I still find directionless about the dubstep, having listened to it tens of times, but it brings together different musical influences seamlessly, the vocal is well fitted, the energy is insane, and overall I'd say it's definitely grown on me over time. But taking everything I've said here into consideration, I reflect differently on the general understandings I have of Barely Alive on the back of their second full-length LP. They were the sort of artists that you could pretty much always bank on doing exact things at precise times, taking their music in the directions you wanted them to. Something that used to permeate their music entirely, but now it's only there in flashes. Barely Alive sound design will always be ridiculously tight and snappy considering how much they bring together. It's just their ideas don't stand up to their past work now in my opinion. The problem with setting such a high standard. However, I think this is a reflection on what I think about the dubstep solely on this album, the genre that everyone knows them most for. Because I definitely prefer the stuff that isn't dubstep on this album more. It's almost as if they've done that genre so well in the past that they've exhausted it respective to their sound and style. The points where they deliver their aesthetic in wholly different ways through R&B, funk, disco, drum and bass, house, are the most enjoyable and interesting that Odyssey has to offer. Generally, it's an experience of having to get used to this newer approach because it's either another genre altogether or it's dubstep that isn't that fleshed out, as I've said. The epic approach of tracks like Dead Link and Spitball is what got me invested from the off, and considering how much they impacted me, it's still an issue of getting used to these newer techniques. Which is a sign of their evolution after all, and doesn't stop me from enjoying the album, I find this a really good listen, but it definitely gets in the way of me seeing this as a truly great project, at this time. Its predecessor comes in at one less track and is a couple of minutes longer, just seems like Barely Alive have gone off that springboard to make their sound even more stripped back, withdrawn and, well, less epic. Leaving me wondering as to whether they actually wanted to keep these songs short, or if they felt they had to cater to the short attention spans of many music listeners out there. Which would suck, but you know, it's a thing and unfortunately cannot be ignored these days. There are tracks that come close to the top level of Barely Alive production, but they're not of the dubstep variety, that which lured people into their cyber world in the first place. Having said that, it is extremely commendable that they've gone ahead and made a second album, an ambition that's rare within dark electronic music, and must be lauded for that reason alone. Even though structurally it comes across as more of an experiment than a full project per se, there is so much to enjoy about Odyssey from track 1 to track 14. It may be a bit of a gung-ho album with hardly any sense of awareness beyond the track listing and reflection within the tracks individually to give them more of an epic feel, but fundamentally Willie and Matt supply a truckload of staple barely alive sounds here and dip into styles that we didn't think possible with their music beforehand, all of which come off very well. So maybe this is that point in their careers where they put dubstep to bed for a while to concentrate on exploring even more new genres, because on the basis of this, I for one would warm to that with little hesitation. They seem to have used up all their great dubstep ideas, there are some good ones here, but they are nothing on their biggest numbers. The magic of this album, in turn, being the experimentation of it, all the newnesses that the duo have to offer, which will keep me returning to it again and again. 
It's just very interesting to think about what they'll do following this second album. They've got a loyal and huge enough following that they can do anything. So I guess we'll just have to watch this space and wait. Now in terms of my favourite from Odyssey, I think Deeper In Love is one of the best electronic tracks you'll hear this year full stop. But as you know, this channel is all about dark electronic music. And so on that basis, I'm going to have to go with Warrior. Barely Alive's latest foray into drum and bass music is mile and away their best yet in my opinion. So seizing and gripping just has you in its grasp from start to finish in its many guises. And in terms of recommendations, if you enjoyed this album, then I would look at Jarvis, the only other person for me who's really keeping the bro step scene alive, alongside the Frim, but he doesn't upload anywhere near as much as Mr. Jarvis, so definitely check him out. And so that is that for another review on the Naughty Step channel, this time of the new Barely Alive album released on Disciple Records, Odyssey. Thank you very much, and as always, for tuning in. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on Odyssey. What did you guys make of it? Which track was your favourite of the 14? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell along the way, and I shall see all of you legends in the next one. Peace out.